Hello everyone, it's Drama Free Friday. Yes it is. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day wherever you are in the world. Charlie's here with me. I should have cleaned your face up a little bit. Hello, hello. How's everybody? Face up a little bit. Hello, hello. Okay. We're ready to rock. <sighs> yes, Charlie is joining me at the moment. Chance is over here beside me. We're all going to say hello. Hi, Ann. Hi, Nancy, Lori, Angie, Mina, Gina. Mina and Gina. Sounds like twins, doesn't it? Hi, Becky. Good to see you. I hope you are taking a break from the unpacking for a bit. Candy, Joan, Gail. Hi, Jean. Oh, you're welcome, Becky. Thank you. Thank you. I meant every word of it. Hi, Nancy. Lots of Nancy's in the house today. Nancy Dale, wanna be Nancy? Nancy Lore. We have got the. We have got lots of Nancy's in the house today. That's great. My furry babies are doing pretty well. They really are. Hi, Peg. Good to see you. Um. Yeah. Here you go. This is Charlie. He was the patient. He was the one who was in the hospital for a few days. Oop. He had to do a little leg shake. For whatever reason. Hi, Mary Ellen. Hi, Linda. Uh, for whatever reason, he doesn't keep his face very clean right now. Why do you, are you shaking your leg? <laughs> He's shaking his hind leg. He's silly. Um, I know you can't see him. Let's see if we can scoot him back a little bit so you can see him a little better. So he's he's he hasn't made a significant amount of progress this week. See how dirty his little face is, but he has not lost any ground, and his progress has been. I'd say he's kind of leveled off now. You know, so he's exhibiting quite a few of normal behaviors from where he was in the past. Um, hi, Linda. we got lots of Lindas and lots of Nancys. The, the clock, our, which I'm glad you said that, our time is changing this weekend. So next week, we will be falling back an hour. So, I would suggest, those of you in other time zones that don't know how the time change works here, <laughs> I would suggest that you um, check that out on the world clock or whatever. Because I don't know what it does to you guys. Hi, Tracy. Um, welcome to everybody. I'm an hour early. Oh, okay compared because you apparently the time changes differently i don't know why they can't just leave it alone just leave it hi sherry good to see you i haven't seen you for a while i don't know why they can't just leave it alone but no they cannot do that cannot leave it alone just that it's just that would be too simple we can't do that can we mm -mm. so this is charlie boy like i said he was the patient who was in the hospital for a few days but he's doing um He's doing, actually, I think for a 14-year-old kitty cat, I think he's doing as well as he can. He gets on my lap every morning. He is eating now. I don't know that he's eating a lot. You'd think he'd be skinny as a rail. You'd think he'd be skinny as a rail because he's on diet food. He's on diabetic food. 
His portion is limited. You'd think he would be so skinny. I don't know that he's lost an ounce. Ah, uh, yeah. See Nightbot's in the house. Um. Ah, got you, Linda Pierce. Okay. Hi, Chris. Kimberly. Hi, Barbara. Good to see you. Um. There's Claus Man in the house. Hi, Sandy. Tori, good to see you guys. Oh, thank you, Chris. You are welcome. Hi, Yvonne. I don't know. I think there were a couple of other people that I didn't have addresses for that I was going to send cards to. I'm not sure that I know where that stuff is. Maybe it's right here. Let me see. That would be, whoa, good gravy. Good gravy. You just blew, you just blew chunks, boy. <laughs> that is bad news. <laughs> I hope you didn't get on my shirt. That was nasty. <laughs> God, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Ugh, Charlie. <laughs> what am I going to do with you? Oh, he does that. He sneezes and he just sneezes cat yuckies everywhere. Too much information for everyone. Hi, Robin. <laughs> Charlie is happy. <laughs> He's just a little crazy bananas. Um, it seemed like there were a couple of people that I still needed addresses for. Let me just take a just a flat second here. <clears throat> okay. I know that Riri said don't worry about it. Um, Neen, if you happen to be watching, I would love to have your address so I can send you a card. And the Joyce of Arts and Crafts, I don't have any information for you, and Mickey Confer. So, if any of the three of you happen to be watching and you would want to share your address with me, I would love to send you a card for your generous gift. Just to be able to say thank you. So, um, you can respond to me in the comments. Just um, If you're not watching live, you can respond to me in the comments and you can ask how to get a hold of me or you can just go straight to howtogetcreative.com scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll see the support or con whoops I shocked your nose uh, down at the bottom of the page you'll see support or contact us and you can fill out the form and just send it to me there hi Kate um okay if the, I don't know hi Cindy I don't know who all I missed hi Patricia let's see let me scroll back here just a second um, I think I got everybody. I don't know if we have two Yvonne's here or one. Anyway, hello, hello. Um, you hear as long as the battery lasts. Okay, Robin, that's good. Hey, Laura. Hi, Barbara Clark. Tracy. Um, let's see, Kate, I think I said hi to you. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Dorothy. <laughs> Yours and Sandy's dog, cat's been on a measured amount of high dollar diet food. Well, this is certainly pricey. <laughs> pricey food. Hi, Dee Dee Sue. Yeah, it is a pricey, pricey little food. Yes, it is. He has not, and they really, really want him to lose weight, but I don't think he has. Anyway, these cats start following me around. We're, gonna, we're doing the cat thing at the beginning of the stream now. That way it gives people a chance to get here, and it gives the cats time to just relax and, you know, <laughs> get their on-screen time. I'm telling you, these cats, they start wallowing and following at about 11.15 and I don't come on for quite a while past that time but they follow me around and they follow and they meow and they carry on <laughs> and then when it gets when they see me turning on the cameras I don't know if they know that's what I'm doing but the crazy things as soon as I turn on the cameras then they're stuck to me like glue and we know that Charlie's feeling better because he's doing the same thing. So, yeah, isn't that funny? 
Oh, that's so sad. Dee Dee Sue, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, hi Catherine. Let's see. I don't know if I missed anybody else saying anything, but anyway, hello to everyone. Charlie would like to just Charlie would like to stay here for the remainder of the stream, wouldn't you? You want to just stay here? Chance is down here on the floor. I don't know that. Let's see if you can see him. There he goes. He's walking around. He's trying to avoid being um, put back in behind door number one. He's trying to avoid that. Oh, Race will be here, I do believe. He said he would be anyway. Now, yes, uh, ditto what Chris and Lori said about Dee Dee Sue's kitty cat. Two to three pounds a year is recommended weight loss for cats in a year. Well, you got to start with ounces, don't you, Charlie? You got to start with some ounces. Yeah. See, look at this. He's showing you his tummy. That's gut. <laughs> his his belly is so big it covers up his feet. <laughs> yes. He is walking better than he did though. Okay. Let's let's model your pretty face instead of your belly. Um too early for Christmas corn. Oh, Race is not here. I see that. I see that. <laughs> okay, Mr. Charlie Boy, shall we put you in the other room? Shall we put you in the other room? Hmm? Says, nope, I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> Hi, Kate. We got a couple Kates here today. That's great. All right, let me... Um, <coughs> I'm still hacking a little bit, so apologies for that. That happens every once in a while. Okay, let me put the slinky cat away. Slinky kitty. Yeah, come on. Come on, And here's Chance, just so everybody has a has a minute. He's also very svelte. <laughs> Not. Alright, there you go. There you go. I'll see you boys later. I'll be right back. I'm gonna wash my hands. If I make the dreaded mistake of touching, of having pat and patting them and get their dander on my hands and then I put the, touch my face, big mistake, yeah, then I can't. It gets bad for a little bit. Any hoot. Okay. Um... Oh, that's funny, Robin. Made she said she made her pudgy cat girl, kitty girl, chase down the hall for her kibble. She did lose weight. <clears throat> Interesting. Charlie couldn't run if his life depended on it. Yeah, it's the touch your eyes with cat dander. <laughs> this is a real problem. Okay, I guess we're ready to go. What's Ray saying? Get the liquids out. <laughs> Ray's in here so I can get the liquids out, huh? Okay, 
so I didn't do any more in the Santa. I kept threatening to finish him and stream it or record it or something. For the time being, he, this is the one we did the last couple of weeks. He's just sitting here watching me. But I wasn't in the mood. For whatever reason, I wasn't in the mood to paint, finish him up today. So um, I was thinking that's always dangerous, you know. Hi, Sherry. Um, hi, Nanette. That is always dangerous when I start thinking, I don't know, I got this thing going on. Siri, stop listening for a while. That Siri, she's problems. It's always nosing into my business. Always in my business. Um, so anyway, I start thinking about stuff, and I don't know, I got on this... Um, got stuck on this one thing and I just couldn't get it out of my head so I have decided that it must be a thing that we need to talk about right I was just sitting here thinking right one time I I was watching <laughs> it happened to be it happened to be a uh, ch like a church service on television <laughs> and this preacher said I was just sitting on a thought and a bench ran through my mind. <laughs> That's kind of how it is sometimes around here. <laughs> ah, Linda McAllister. Linda McAllister, you need to hush your mouth. Hi, Athena Ducky. What a cool name. Um, so anyway. It's going to sound like a big fat commercial. That's not where it's going to go. Um, it is going to sound like a commercial, so I'll warn you up front. That is not where this is going to go. I did put links to the book, to my book, in the description box so that if people were interested, they can check out the links in the description box. <sighs> but what kept coming to me was about this whole thing that we're all dealing with. Uh, <laughs> Ray says, she does not like it when I say that I was thinking. Because <laughs> you know when, when Ray says I was thinking, you know what that means, people? When Ray says I was thinking, do you know what that means? It means I'm getting ready to get a big fat assignment of some kind. <laughs> a big fat assignment. <laughs> Hi, Teresa. Yes. I'm getting ready to get an assignment. It always turns out okay. <laughs> but it, uh, sometimes it's like, oh, oh, what am I going to do now? What's he got in mind now? So anyway, um, quite a few of you know that I wrote a book. I've written several books, but this one was one of the early ones. And I would just what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the art portion of this. And we're going to, um, I'm going to show you where the art came from. I'm going to show you where the art morphed into um, the images in the book. And then we're actually going to do something in my art journal. So there you go. So there's the, there's the curve of what we're doing. Um, this is the original book in the printed form. Okay, Normal Doesn't Live Here Anymore, An Inspiring Story of Hope for Caregivers by yours truly. Um, this came about because I, for several reasons, one of them was I was a caregiver for my parents. Another one was it was a, very much a part of my healing journey. And, um, it, hey Sandra. And if I miss what you're, if I miss what you're saying in the chat, please forgive me. <laughs> we are going to have a giveaway today also. And so if you are interested in giveaway, we're going to give away three sets of the um, book on audio. So if you are, this is on CD. So if you're in, if you would like a chance to win that, there's no strings attached whatsoever. And so we're going to do that throughout the the um, stream. And Race is going to navigate that for me. And I'm going to let him do it any way he wants. Because <laughs> it's okay. 
however he wants to do it i'm a he's in charge he's in charge because i got i have enough just trying to keep my brain going anyway so where was i yes so the information i will tell you it's a big thick book it's not a hard read the the uh, font is a nice big font i think it's like a 14 size font so it's not difficult to read it was published back in i think 2011 there's been a lot of changes and updates in things especially in the technology world so there's going to be some of the things in here that are no longer totally applicable um, because so much so many other things have moved forward for example when i was taking care of my parents there was no such thing as an iphone i did have a cell phone but no iphone and so there were many things that i could have done far more easily there was no such thing as an app uh, because there was no need for that um, things could not be tracked on phones i had a binder and i tracked everything in a binder and um, that became the basis my binders and my journals became the basis for the book which I ended up using to share with other people, hopefully to inspire them, to give them a story, the learning the curve of my story, just because I didn't have anything like that in my life to help me do that, you know, to help me understand what happened to my life. My life just, I mean, my life absolutely imploded. Would I do it again? Yes, I would do it again. Um, even with the knowledge I have today about how hard it was, would I do it again? I would. Would I do things differently? Well, of course, you know. And when you have more, what is it Oprah says or somebody says, when you know better, you do better. Yeah, of course. Of course you're going to do things differently. Any hoot. Let's just move forward. Oh, thank you, Sandy. Let you know when. Okay. Hi, Josephine. So I'm going to talk for about another five minutes and then we'll do the first giveaway. How's that? <laughs> You're from Sweden? Well, wonderful. I'm the sweetest woman ever. Josephine, I love you. <laughs> that was very kind of you. Thank you. And thank you for popping in and saying hello. Maya Angelou said that? Okay. <laughs> That's right. Maya Angelou said that. See, Maya Angelou and Oprah kind of get twisted up inside of me because I know they were such, they were so close. So thank you for correcting me, Laura. I appreciate that. Hi, Sharon. Um, hi, Crafty Realtor. Crafty Realtor, you're here live. Usually I just, we communicate via the, the um, comments. Is it Jana? Hi, Nell. Hi, Lorraine. Um... Yes. Okay. Jana, you may have to tell me again, but I, I was, you, I took a shot in the dark. I'm glad you got to join us live. Okay. So the book came into being and, um, it, it was very painstaking and, um, it came into being because, oh no, I'm glad, no, no, I'm glad you did, Laura. I really like to attribute the quote to the right person. No. Nope correct me that's perfect it was perfect i agree quotes are i have collected quotes listen i have this is one of my one of my many although it's little so it's many one of my many quote books and um as all of my journals do, they have all kinds of stuff in here, but this is just all different kind of qu kinds of quotes. I never can find my, my favorite one in here. I'm going to have to mark it with a, a uh, post-it one of these days. It's just a little goofy little book that I made out of leftover stuff. I'll read you a couple of my favorite quotes. I know I'm sidetracking myself. I realize that. Creativity can come out of trauma, or the trauma can shut you down. After 9-11, there were 300 quilts generated for quilt market in just six weeks. I thought that was pretty interesting. That wasn't my favorite quote. 
I'll see if I can find it. <laughs> it is my favorite one. Let's see. Because what I do, here we go. This is it. I found it. This is my favorite quote out of this entire little goofy little book. Ready? And, and you see, it, is, it even has Angry Bird stickers. I found those at Walmart one day, and I like I like to play Angry Birds. I don't play it much anymore, but I liked Angry Birds, so I just stuck those stickers in there. It makes no sense whatsoever. But anyway, hi L. Um, <laughs> hi Lauren. So this is my very favorite quote ever. And I don't know who said it, so you are welcome to um, <laughs> write it down if it means as much to you as it does to me. It's perfect. It's very applicable for this time of year, by the way. Women are angels, and when someone breaks our wings, we simply continue to fly on a broomstick. <laughs> we are flexible. <laughs> That's my favorite quote ever. I'm sure the men in my life will agree with that. Is that not the best quote ever? <laughs> I know. I should have posted it while I found it. <laughs> it's the best quote ever. <laughs> Hi, Mary's Folly. <laughs> That's the best one ever. This is a fun little book. I'll show it to you real quick. I'll show it to you real quick. Because it's a fun little book. It is truly made out of leftover stuff. And as all of my um, journals do, they have crap stuck in. Uh, these are, it's made out of leftover um, security envelopes with other stuff stuck in. And stitching, and I've so far been able to leave these threads hanging out. I don't like that, but I tried to make myself stretch a little bit out of my comfort zone the pay uh, the paint on here is just watercolor paint from i think it was from the prang watercolor set and i just tipped in some of these little envelopes and uh in pockets and stuff like that i don't know why because there's nothing in them and then i stuck in some images that i liked but this little book is like probably four and the width of the page is probably two and a half or something like that I guess I could measure it couldn't I the pages are five by three so five tall by three inches wide but these are just you know like I said the envelopes in pockets don't have anything in them but they're in here and um, yeah, it does, it's one of those journals that really doesn't make a lot of sense, but it is quick for me. As you can see, I could actually grab it when I thought about it. And there's still plenty of room in here to write quotes and stuff like that. So if you like quotes, I hope that you have a book that you can collect quotes in. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is letting go of the pain that other people cause you that you or and either one and or that you caused yourself. <laughs> my family tree has only a few branches. This is a true saying in my case. This is a true saying. Mm -hmm. So anyway, there is that little book and that's what it looks like on the outside. And that's that okay so anyway back to and that's only one of my quote journals <clears throat> back to the book uh, the story started it was based on journals and based on my experience with taking care of my parents I'm a family care I was a family caregiver I'm not a nurse <laughs> believe me I wish I had been a nurse um, but I was not so I had to learn the hard way <laughs> After the story was written, then someone says to me, someone who's in the chat, <clears throat> who says that I hate it when he says, I've been thinking. <laughs> um, he wanted me to um, 
make some images, do some illustrations. So I did. So that's where this is going, okay? So what I wanted, to, first of all, I'll show you the images that are in the, some of the images in the book. I know I've shown some of this before. However, um, not everyone has seen it. And so I'll show you some of them. And then I'm going to show you where the images came from. So throughout the book, the printed version of the book, you will see the black and white versions of, of the various images. See, this is so far back that what I was using to take care of myself was a CD player and an iPod. This was even a fancy iPod. So that's why they're included in there. Um, so there are lots of images. Many of them are provocative. Uh, some of them are just a stamp in time. You know, like this was one of the ones that was more gut-wrenching, so to speak. But many of them are just in here to just illustrate and, and um, make the story more, you know, more interesting. So the, the printed version of the book has the images in it in black and white because that's what was available. The, so, and some of them are small images, some of them are big. The Kindle version of the book has the images in, that are in color. And the, the advantage to that, every one of the versions of the book that, that Race put together, he's the one that did it, not me. I just lived it. <laughs> I just lived it and wrote the story with much prodding from him. <laughs> and by the way, he would say to me periodically, I'd send him a draft and he'd say, he'd read it and he'd say, you didn't go far enough. I was like, what are you talking about? You need to tell me more of this part of this story. And I'm like, I can't. I don't remember. And he got really rude with me one day. I kid you not. This kid, this kid, this young man got so rude with me one day. I was in absolute, I was in tears. I was crying so hard. He said, you did not go far enough and you know what it is. Just do it. And I'm like, oh rotten to me. I'm your mother. You're supposed to be kind to me. Yeah. He's always right, though. That's the bad part. So there's another one. Anyway, um, so I did the, the images. As I said, on the Kindle version, the images are in color, and the images can, because you're on an electronic device, you can actually do that with your fingers and expand the images. So anyway, Hi, Shu. Hi, Violet. Oh, that's funny. Don't sweat the petty stuff and don't pet the sweaty stuff. That's a good one, Violet. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. <clears throat> okay. So, this is where this all started. Um, I was asked by he who shall remain nameless. <laughs> To get out of this what I need. He was asking me to get busy and make some images. And so I did. Okay, so I did. And so I got, I knew nothing about watercolor. I knew nothing about what kind of paper to use. I knew nothing about nothing. And so this is sketchbook paper. Okay, this is crappy sketchbook paper. It's not even good sketchbook paper. And these are Prang watercolors. And I used, um, in some places, I used a Copic marker, because I didn't know any better, to do the shadowing around the letters. So this is what I did. I just sat, sat down and spent weeks going through the book and taking... A particular point in the story 
that stuck out to me and I would create an image that went with it. Okay. Someday these are probably going to all go away because this is probably like not acid free by any means. Anyway, I went through the book and this was this was the story. This was probably my first art journal actually. This was the story along with these that I've already turned over. This was the story in images. So that's where the images in the book came from. And this is how he got all the stuff that he then plugged into the text. Um, in fact, I got so angry that I gave, I, I scanned these or took pictures of them or whatever. I don't know what I did. I got so angry because I was so over it. I was so over it. <laughs> interestingly, I'm, interestingly, I land on the gratitude page, which has sparklies and gold and stuff in it. When I get tell you the part about being angry, I was so angry that I told him that I just I gave him the book, and I didn't want it. I didn't want anything to do with it ever again, and so forth and so on. <laughs> this is another one of my favorite images. Yeah, it's a pressure cooker for anybody that doesn't know. It's a pressure cooker. Oh, seriously, if I could handle the camera, you'd think after all this time I could handle the camera. This says stress up here. Um, this came from the, the thing somebody one time said, well, just tie a knot. If you're at the end of your rope, just tie a knot and hang on. It's like, oh. Yeah, sometimes there isn't enough rope to tie a knot in. So anyway... Um, and this was the image about setting multiple alarm clocks because again, like I said, I couldn't set multiple alarms on a phone that didn't exist. So I had clocks. And so I set multiple alarm clocks that would wake me up multiple times a night, to check on my mom, etc. Okay, so that's that. At the end of the story, at the end of the story, um, because I had to come to a point where I could write from a position of hope. Because if I couldn't tell the story, it was a hard story to tell. If I couldn't come from a position of hope, um, people were not going to accept the hard parts. And I knew that. And, um, so I had, and I also had to let people know that I was okay. And because it got really, really bad at one point got really 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 bad <laughs> got really really bad and then it got worse but then I had to let people know that I was okay and during that time of all of that what came in what became a very powerful symbol for me and what I'm um, interested in sharing with you guys or asking you guys more than anything I'm interested in asking you if you have any personal symbols, if you do, I'd love to read about those in the chat. And I'll try to go back through the chat later if I don't see it. Hello, unapologetic. I don't know. Ella. Ella. I see it now. Um, but one of the very powerful symbols that came through this experience for me was the phoenix. And so this is the image that depicted that. And this is the one from my original sketch sketchbook drawings. And um, a bear or a wolf. There you go. Interesting. It's just so interesting to read and to understand, you know, what different people have as a personal symbol. And the symbolism is completely personal. Nobody has to know what the symbolism is or anything else. So interesting. I love reading that. A wolf. A bear. Hi, Noe. Tree of life. Yeah. So interesting. <clears throat> so I'm just reading for a minute. Butterfly. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That's another one of mine, Ella. Um, the lotus. Cool. 
So this was one of, of my personal symbols. And from this came other things because I don't know about you guys, but at some point, you know, I just, I get on a rip and I just can't, I just can't stop. So Clausman, who is in the chat, also jumped on that bandwagon because he knew how much the Phoenix meant to me. And so he created this necklace for me. And I'm going to hold it up just so you can see it in my hand. This is carved or uh, cut. It's hand sawed out of silver. So it's um, fine silver, I believe. And then he stamped, stamped the star on and stamped some texture on it. And so this is the Phoenix. It's quite tarnished at this point. No less significant to me, but still it's, um, I tried to clean it up today and I got, I got some of the tarnish off of it. So you, so it would be a little shiny for you guys. Um, so that was, that was just really meaningful for me but I still wasn't done you know I still wasn't done and so yeah. here's what happens for me I just have to go until it's I have to go until the thing whatever the thing is which may not make any sense to you guys runs its course and so I wasn't done yet and so I did this quilt and um, I'm gonna try to hold it up because it's it's on, it hangs on a wall in my house. Now, before I show it to you, the phoenix that's in the center of the quilt, I bought. I did not make. A, this is not my own personal thing. Okay. And I have, could not see the camera when I was showing this to you, so I have no idea whether you could fully see it or not. Um, I found a company, and I was looking for them online today to see if I could find them again, because this Phoenix, and I will not be able to show you this um, in total, so I'm just going to show you bits of it, okay? I did do all the quilting. Oops. Here. So this is a laser cut applique. And the I could not find the company online anymore. So my suspicion is that they no longer they're no longer in business. But it came with the crystals. So the Phoenix was laser cut. It came with the crystals. Of course, you could put the crystals wherever you wanted to put them, and the light's kind of washing them out a little bit. Um, but it came with the adhesive on the back, the Steamaseam 2 on the back, a fusible on the back. But from there, it was up to you. There were no instructions. You just, you know, do whatever you want to do. And then there were four of these laser-cut sun images to put on here the way you want. Okay, so what I'm showing you the, is um, how far this whole thing went and how, and it took me actually several years to work my way through this, you know, the, the, the Phoenix is still very powerful symbolism for me, but it is... Um, I'm trying to get over here to some of the quilting. It's still a very powerful symbol for me, but not in the same way. So here's some of the... This, this motif runs around the edge. This is a lotus, sort of lotus design. 
Part of this is free motion stitched and part of it is stitched with the feed dogs up. My free motion work is not very good. That wasn't the point. Here's another one of the Lotus, partial Lotus designs. The rest of it's over here. So I don't know how well you can even see this. Um, my free motion work is not great, but that wasn't the point. The point of this was to make, was to have a place for my energy to go. This part is done with the feed dogs up with a walking foot. Okay. Hi, Hannah. And then uh, the backing fabric is just, it's not going to show very accurately on the camera. The backing fabric was a batik that I chose that sort of sort of went with the Phoenix and then happily I discovered today because I forgot that I had done this I did embroider a patch and put on the back so that I had the information on the back which if you are a quilter or a fiber artist or of any kind you really need to do this because as you know as I showed you <laughs> and just told you I completely forgot that I even when I had done it, or, um, I mean, I knew I did it, but, you know, I didn't remember it. So, I was glad to discover that I had put a patch on the back. Anyway, it hangs in my foyer that comes into my um, studio space. And it's been there so long that I don't necessarily even see it. However, it always reminds me... Um, that um, that symbolism of the phoenix. So I'm going to put this over here. Just get it out of the way. And then I'll hang it back up later. But the symbolism of the phoenix, um, it's a mythical bird. This is just really quick. Mythical bird, a symbol of hope and renewal, rebirth, immortality, resurrection, solitude, and grace. Um, just like the phoenix emerges from its ashes, so can man after devastation and loss. The phoenix gives mankind hope and urges us to fight on. Why, why is that just so much in my head right now? I think because this whole COVID thing that we're, we've all been dealing with for months isn't going away anytime soon, people. It's just uh, as much as we want it to. It is not going away anytime soon. And it's an exhausting, exhausting process. Um, you know, it is, it's not fun to, I know this is Drama Free Friday. Trust me, I know. It's not fun to go places right now. You know, because you have to, because we've all been warned, threatened, scared, whatever, to be so protective and so, you know, careful and all of that. And I get it, I understand, but it, it takes the fun and the joy out of going places and doing things. And so life as we knew it, I think, is, um, is never going to quite be like that again. And what we do is we, just like when I was writing that book, we want to go back. We want to go back. We want it to be like it was. We want normal to come back, you know, so we can be normal again. It isn't ever going to be the way it was. You know, whatever it is, it's never going to be like that again. So what we need to do is just be that colorful. <clears throat> I know it sounds really airy-fairy. I get it. Uh, what we need to do is be that colorful phoenix that, that comes out of this experience um, brighter, better, um, more, more for me, my goal is to be more creative, more everything, you know, or sometimes it's a matter of <clears throat> giving myself the grace to just let it happen, you know, just let it happen. <clears throat> Excuse my throat. Just let it happen and just see what, what comes next. So I, I don't know why I was compelled to share that with you today, but anyway. I was. So there you go. 
<clears throat> End of sermon. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm glad that um, I'm glad you enjoyed seeing it. You know, I think the deal is not. How do I say this? I'm the world's worst at doing this, by the way. The point is not to fight it, not to fight the situation. It's not going to make it better. <clears throat> so not to fight it, but to, um, one of my, <clears throat> let me say this in a different way. One of my favorite movies ever is Home for the Holidays with Holly Hunter and Robert Downey Jr., some people may think it's an atrocious movie. I laughed my butt off, and I still do every time I see it, because it reminds me, <laughs> it reminds me just way too much of my family. And one of the, the best lines in the whole thing, the Holly Hunter character has gone home for the holidays, hence the name, and her family is just crackers. And she, her daughter was unable to go with her, her teenage daughter or something, high school, college age daughter or something. <clears throat> and so at one point, the Holly Hunter character takes the phone with a very long cord, you know, into the bathroom and shuts the door and calls her daughter because she's losing her mind. The mother is. And her daughter says to her, Mom, remember the goldfish? You got to float. Just float. And I thought um, that was a really poignant line. And that's one of my favorite lines. Along with the image of the phoenix is the image of just float. You know, what does that mean? I'm not a water bug or water person. I'm not Xandra. Xandra's a mermaid. I'm not. <clears throat> and um, I just float. You know, sometimes that's what you can do. Sometimes that's all you can do. So anyway, Race, are you here? <clears throat> Hello, Alicia. Hello, Miss Mary Berry. Um, I know, I know, right, Sharon? And I think that was part of it. Or Gail, that was part of it, you know, because you have the image of the dead fish or the goldfish that's floating is dead. Well, that wasn't exactly what her point was, but it does. <clears throat> those of us with, hi, Tam. Those of us uh, with um, a little, you know, half a bubble off kind of mind, <laughs> we do that. I'm right, Zandra, right? Oh, I agree, Violet. Absolutely. Okay, race is not here. Hi, Carla. Okay, so let's go ahead and give away. Let's go ahead and give away two of the sets of the CDs. So I'm going to let race deal with that. And we're actually going to do three. We're going to do one at the end. So we'll do take a minute here and we'll do two. So if you're interested in this, this is you do have to have a way to listen to CDs. Okay, because this is the book read by me on six CDs. Okay, it is also available from Audible. I did put the link to that in the description box if you're interested. Um, but this, the book is read by me. The music that's on it is original music by Race. It is played by Race. And um, so it is truly a labor of love between all of us. Um, so there you go. Okay, so we're going to let Race deal with it, and um, what, however he runs, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, however Race runs the, the, the drawing, that's how it's going to be. He's the char he's in charge, <laughs> but I will send them to you because I have them, so I will send them to you. So all I need to know from Race is later if you would send me the names of the people so I can get in touch with them. <clears throat> okay, so he's put the instruction in the chat there for you. Hi, hey, Mary. Okay. Yes, International's welcome to, to enter it as well. 
I don't know why my voice is just going upside down. Okay, so we're going to go for a minute. Race, put the instruction in one more time, would you? Hi, Sheena. Your, your symbol is the rhino. Interesting. Interesting. Yes, I will send it to international. It may take, it may take a good long while to get there, but I will send it international. <laughs> I'm going to send it by slow boat, just telling you. Okay, putting the lid back on the illegal fluids. So, 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 I hate it when I say that, by the way. I'm trying to make fun of myself so that I train myself not to do that. Simple as the owl. Cool. Okay, and saying okay is just about as bad as saying so. <laughs> I don't know. What is wrong with me? Who knows? Alrighty. <clears throat> I know, Barbara, I know. Listen, do, let me just tell you. I, I have learned to edit video, which <laughs> there can be a lot of people that are glad about that. I'm not an, uh, an editing whiz by any means, but I get the job done. I've learned enough about it to be able to do some good stuff for classes and so forth. And I have learned something very important about myself, and that is, <laughs> and that is <laughs> how many times I start a sentence with the word so, or how many times I take a breath and say, so, well, I'm thinking, or how many times I say, all righty, or okay, or I do this. <laughs> Seriously. And there are places in some of the video I've been editing lately, because that's what I've been doing a lot of, where I kid you not, I did this. I went, all right, okay, so... <laughs> And then went into the next whatever it was I was going to say. Really? Really? <laughs> I, just, I told Race, I said, oh, I'm trying so hard to break myself of that. <laughs> um, it's another one. I'm trying so hard to break myself of that because it takes so long to go through and weed all that nonsense out. I almost said something bad. <laughs> I know. Oh, goodness. She spins. That is Juanita. Great. Great. And Martha. Those are the two. Okay, Martha. I don't know which Martha that is. Here's what you got to do. Hi, Dana. Here's what you have to do. Okay, here's what you got to do. Those of you that win, I'm going to give you a week to do this. Those of you that your name, it's a random draw thing through Nightbot. It's a random, random, random. If you are one of the names who um, is selected by Nightbot, then what you need to do is you need to go to howtogetcreative.com. Okay, howtogetcreative.com. That will take you to the page and scroll down through the page and you'll see support or contact us. Click on that and that gives you a support ticket and then just fill in your information and just give me your address and tell me that you were a winner. So this applies to Martha and Juanita so far. We'll have one more at the end, uh, barring that I don't forget, which I'm going to try really hard not to. But I'll need your information there. And just put in the, put in the subject line, normal or normal CDs or something, and I'll know what it is. Okay? All right. She spins is Juanita. So that is the first one. All right, I should write this down right here, right now. Okay, and Martha. What, which Martha was it? Hi, Marion. Can Martha 
I need a, more information about Martha, if possible. If not, I'll get it later. Okay. But I will need your address because I don't have either address for either of you. Okay? Okay. Let's do something. Let's do something, shall we? <clears throat> okay, there. Race put in. Nightbot put in. You can just click right there. That'll just click that and that'll give you take you right over there. You don't even have to. It's not even hard. You can just do it right there. Race is... What would we do without race? Our technical department. Tell you, what would we do? Oh, thank you, Juanita. Great. Great, great, great. Okay. Perfect. Hi, Janice. Perfect. Okay. Stop saying that. Let's move forward. And we will do one more drawing a little bit later. We'll do another drawing about 30 minutes. Okay, race? About 30 minutes. See if I can. I'll set my watch for 30 minutes so that I'll know. 30 minutes. Okay. That way I won't forget. Tell you all these electronics. Whew. Okay. There I go again. Hello, B&D Crafts and more. Nice to have you join us. Hi, Andrea. This is an art journal. I took the cover off of it already. This is the cover that goes on it, which, by the way, <laughs> you guys are going to be so excited. Well, I'm excited. I don't know if you guys are going to be excited, but I'm excited. Seeing this image of Miss Muppet. The merchandise things that we have with my artwork on it is a giant step forward. And you are going to have the chance to have Miss Muppet. Yes, you're going to have the chance to have Miss Muppet on something. Here she is, Miss Muppet. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Mrs. Gigi. Good to see you. So this was the cover that was on the book. I took it off. Okay? I took it off. And this is an art journal that we've done most of these pages in here together. I'm just going to do a quick flip through. There's not very many pages. This was the very first one we did. It's the very first page in the book. Yes. And I even stamped the word upside down. You have to do something like that in every art journal. Either the page has to be upside down or the word has to be upside down. It's not an art journal unless something is upside down. I know. Um, but, 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 but. This was when I was very um, influenced by the, the song at this table. This is a wonderful song. If you have not heard it, I really encourage you to either Google the lyrics or listen to the song. It is a lesson that we all need. It's by Idina Menzel. Idina is spelled I-D-I-N-A. That may not be how she pronounces it, but that's how I pronounce it. Idina Menzel. M-E-N-Z-E-L. Hello, Carlene. Good to see you. These are all bits and pieces of my heart. From my heart to yours. This was all from a calendar. This was all paper. I guess you'd say paper piece. That's probably not right, but it's all bits and pieces. Like these are all individual things from a calendar that I stuck in here. They were all from the same calendar, but I just put them together. And what's over here on this side, you know, kind of relates to this, but maybe, maybe not. We did this one. This was from a flyer from a grocery store, putting this, making the space up. And um, this was one I really didn't like. Is this the one I really didn't like? I don't know. One of these pages I really didn't like, and then I ended up liking it. <laughs> Here's 
my family. We even have some relatives. Yes, we do, people. We have my family that's coming to merchandise near you. My family being my family. Uh-huh. Yes, my family is coming to merchandise near you. <laughs> this was the page we did, which is still waiting to be completed, <laughs> that we did after the lockdown, when no one could find toilet paper. So I looked high and low to find toilet paper. I finally found some toilet paper. And um, it, they just, the toilet paper hasn't been added to this crazy page. It's never been finished. This was when the Jerry's Artorama came out with the Picasso roll doing the the face of, roll of Picasso, sorry, roll of Picasso. So this was my roll of Picasso, which is just weirder than crap, but you know, anyway. Um, this was homage to my dad. This is my dad, and he was a floriculture professor. So this was an homage to my father. This is old zipper around the outside of this tag for the the um, trim and to elevate it. I'm not, I don't know about, I don't know about you guys. I'm not a great user of foam tape. I think you're either a person who uses a lot of foam tape to create levels in your stuff or you're not. I'm not one of those. I have a giant roll of foam tape. I've never used it for anything ever. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't like it, I guess. I don't know. So anyway, I elevated this and changed it by putting some zipper around the edge. This one done on burlap is done with corrugate, corrugated cardboard paper or whatever. We actually corrugated this by running it through a crimper. And there's Chance, and I have to tell you that Chance, Chance is going to be coming to merchandise near you before long also. Now, all I need to do is get Charlie done, and we'll have all three of the animal member, family members, <laughs> immortalized on merchandise, should you want to have them. Anyway, so there's Chance. I do need yet to do Charlie. And that's as far as we got. Okay, this is the page we're going to work on right here. This is, I think, watercolor paper, but I'm not certain. I scraped on a coating of gesso. It is a little... Um, I'm going to get a piece of brown paper sack here. This is Liquitex Gesso. It's a little rough, so we're going to smooth it up a little bit. And this is just brown paper bag, like a grocery bag. This was a trick that we used to use when I was doing decorative paintings with... We were doing acrylic. And those of you that can't stand this this noise, I'm sorry. Mute me. This is like fingernails on a chalkboard for lots of people, I know. Um, this is a trick we used to use when I was doing oil painting back in the decorative painting days in the 70s. Which is long before some of you were even alive, I know. <laughs> But we would do acrylic backgrounds and then paint oils on top of it. Do I think it'll happen before Christmas? Boy, Chris, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Bye, Becky. I'm hoping. That is the plan, anyway. That is the plan. We have lots of... There's lots of planning going on over here. Lots of planning. Okay. So what I did was I took my original, the original piece being this, except right side up would be even better, wouldn't it? Took the original piece, a stylized phoenix. 
I made a copy of it in black and white and I enlarged it. Okay, that's what I've done so far. And then I took this copy, which I enlarged by, I think, 115% or something, just so it would be bigger, big enough to fill my page a little bit better. And then I put a piece of tracing paper over it and traced it off with a pencil. Hi, Ellie. See you later. Thanks for popping in. <laughs> Get all the way ahead of you, Barb. I already turned the sound down. I understand. I should have given you... People give heat gun warnings all the time. I should give you a sanding warning. <laughs> ah. Yes. Okay, so there is our... Our image that's going to go on this page. Or something like it. We don't know how it's... Let's be honest, people. Let's just be totally honest. Do we know how this is going to come out? No, never. Never know how it's going to come out. Never. So we're just going to go go with it and see what happens. Okay? Just go with it and see what happens. I do want to put a background on here because I like the way that this turned out. Do you see it? It's a lot of, there's metallic and stuff on there. I like how the background looks, so let's play with that. I don't know how it'll work. I did put gesso on here, and I have this whole container full of gelatos. Shall we use some of them? Let's do. So we're going to do a rainbow of gelatos simply because I have them. All right, red, orange, I need a yellow. So we're going to put a rainbow. Laura, Laura, this should make you happy. Laura, New Jersey crafter Laura, paging Laura. Okay, red, orange, yellow, we need green. Let's see which kind of green do I want to use. Maybe this green. Red, orange, yellow, green, and then we're going to use this that's metallic. I don't want to use metallics. This one. Hi, Hannah. Are you the Hannah? Yeah, you are, because I see your icon there. If you guys don't follow Hannah, um, you should. She is a phenomenal... She's a phenomenal art journal... art journaler and artist. And a long time ago back when the first what was that um i took one it was a whole series of workshops it was one of the first times that somebody did that who did that connie oh hannah's gonna have to tell help me out um connie she's a it's a vicar or something i can't remember her last name somebody helped me out with what it was um Hannah can tell me. Anyway, she was one of the teachers. And I really enjoyed, I can't tell you now exactly what we did. It's rumbling around in the back part. It's right back here in the back part of my head. But what I, what I learned from Hannah in that class was to be freer. Not to plan things so much. To be freer. 21 secrets. Yes. 21 secrets. Thank you, Hannah. And it was like one of the first ones. Hi, Alicia. It was like one of the first ones that she did. She did um, quite a few different different renditions of that. I don't know if that's even still going on. But anyway, I learned a lot from Hannah. Hannah's overseas someplace, but I forgot where. Netherlands, maybe? I forgot. Anyway, I digress. If you don't follow her, you should. Put the um, Hannah, put the name. You can't put the link in because you're not a mod, but you can put the name of your YouTube channel in there if you want to. That'd be good. And then people can find you. Okay. One, okay. Red, orange. Listen to me. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. And then we need um, an indigo, so we'll do this one. 
right, let's put these away. We'll call this, is Laura here? Hmm? Hmm? Is Laura here? Sweden, Sweden, that's where she is. Oh, I did. Okay, there you go, Studio I Hannah. Probably if you search I Hannah on, on um, YouTube, you can find her. Lots of people have YouTube channels. If I if I shout out somebody, it's just because it was, you know, top of my head. Not slighting anyone. It's just that's where my attention went in that moment. Okay. So there you go. Gail says it. Roy G. Biv. That's right, Juanita. Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Looks pretty close to this. So let's go for it, shall we? Let's do it. I have not used my these gelatos for a while so we don't know what kind of shape they're in so let's just see <laughs> they could be dried up I don't know all right red orange as my son used to say orange yellow green these also happen to be the colors of the chakras so any of you that are into chakras this is good too hi Gertie welcome blue Yeah, I wish I could remember what it was we did in that class that I took with you, Hannah. I don't know. I don't know whether it's... This was my book from way back in the day. Wait, let me finish putting these on here. I can sidetrack myself quicker than a minute. Okay, there's indigo. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to blend these and let them sit for just a minute, and then we'll peek into this book. These seem a little bit um, oily-ish on the top, so we'll see how they, how they do. Okay. I don't know how this will work, but let's get a... couple of baby wipes. Let's see. Let's see what we get. We can always add some more. If I scrub too much of it off, we'll add some more. Because I'm after more of a uh, watercolor sort of effect. And it looks like that's what we're going to get. Okay. Okay, okay. So... <laughs> Oh my goodness, Barb. You're a mess, girl. You're a mess. Barb is a mess. Okay. If I whisper, it doesn't count. <laughs> if I whisper, it doesn't count. Those are the colors I used. In case anybody wants to know exactly what they were, I will tell you the color names, okay? If I can find it. This is Red Cherry, so that's the red. The orange was Tangerine. The yellow was Buttercream. The yellow has disappeared. We should put some more yellow in there. 
We'll put a little yellow back in there because I kind of wiped it out. The green is green tea. The blue was cotton candy. I love cotton candy color. Love that. Then we had blueberry. And lastly, we had grape. Okay. Let me blend this yellow just a smidgen. See if we can keep from wiping it all off the page. All right. There we go. Good enough. Moving on. My favorite words in the whole world. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Let's take a look through this 21 Secrets book. See if I can, by some chance, come up with what I did in Hannah's class. Did you see my rainbow, Laura? Did you see the rainbow? Mm-hmm. Did you see the rainbow? That was for you, Laura. This is when I was a little bitty kid. I know. That's me. That's my mom. Look at that sweet, cute baby. What happened to her? Well, she grew into this cranky little kid. This was my best friend. This is my best friend. Her name was Wendy. She was a boxer. She was truly my best friend. There she is again and again. She was with me until I was 13. And this is my other best friend. Her name was Mitzi. She was a little tabby kitten we got from the lady that used to bring eggs to us. Those of you that know Paula Phillips, this was her class from that. It was about flips and flaps and windows and stuff like that. Um, and hidden pockets and things of that sort. I think this was part of Paula's class too. Maybe or maybe not. I don't know. I don't remember. Do you remember what you taught way back in the day, Hannah? I think I've I think this is all just other stuff that I did. Yeah, I don't know. I must have it in a different art journal somewhere. Because I think that was all the 21 secrets. You saw it on your TV? <laughs> okay. I don't know. Boy, I can't remember. Anyway. 21 Secrets. It was a good, good, really good class. I just remember whatever it was, I just have a really good feeling about it, but I can't recall the exact class. Crazy girl. Crazy girl I am. All right, back to Laura's favorite thing in the whole wide world, a rainbow. Let's hit this with a little bit of tissue paper. It was a long time ago. I cannot remember. I don't know what, I wonder where that is. Now I'm thinking I'm going to have to go dig around in my art journals and see if I can find what I did in your class, Hannah. Long time ago. Do you teach classes online, Hannah? Seems like I remember that that's something you did. I knew Laura would like this. Laura is the rainbow girl. Laura, were you ever a rainbow girl, a bona fide rainbow girl, like in the organization? What shoe size am I? Why do you want to know that? <laughs> that choked me up, Race. Why do you want to know that? <laughs> Are we talking European sizing or American sizing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see whether this is dry. It might or might not be. This may work and this may not, people. I don't know. Anyway. So not as much. Hannah says not as much these days. Alright, let's put this let's put this bird on here, shall we? Let's just put this bird on here. I'm gonna cut down some of my 
um, tracing paper so that I can actually apply this to my page. Laura's not a bonafide anything. <laughs> Laura, you are too. You are too. Laura has a great YouTube channel. If you guys don't subscribe to her channel, you should. Scraps of Beauty. Xandra is one who has a YouTube channel. You should subscribe to her as well. You should subscribe to everybody who is a creative person on YouTube. And if you don't know, if somebody's, um, if you don't know what they're, I wonder if this is going to pull the gelato off. We'll find out. We'll find out. You know, you just got to try things. It's an art journal, people. It's just an art journal. And if something screws up, we'll, um, <laughs> we'll always wish that it had not. <laughs> Race, I'm not really sure. I haven't bought shoes in like a hundred years, so I don't know. Honestly, I don't have a clue. What I'm using is graphite paper. This is what I always use to transfer designs. I know that some people will put graphite on the back, like like um, take a soft lead pencil and rub it all over the back or outline the design on the back. I don't do that because this is so much easier for me. So this is what I use. <clears throat> Carla's working in the painted paper glue book. Cool. That is cool. Ah, oh, Carla said that she has started glue book January on her channel. Carla, you're you're ahead or behind. I don't know which. <laughs> glue book January. She's either way ahead or she's or she's way behind. All right, let's see if we can get this to transfer. This may not transfer up here on the dark color. Let's give it a shot. If it doesn't transfer, I'll sketch it in with, um, yes, colored pencil or whatever. This is such a simple phoenix. If you really like the image of the phoenix, I'm sure that you could create one of your very own. I'm using a stylus. This is a Martha Stewart stylus. This is not my normal stylus. Oops that I transfer patterns with, but it works just fine. I have my original stylus from back when I was doing decorative painting. It's still in its original little tube. This is the stylus that I used back when I was doing a lot of decorative painting. Why is it still in its little tube? And the answer to that question is why not? <laughs> answer to the question is well, why not I don't know why it's in there there's some things that I keep up with like that there are other things that not so much this is gonna be very interesting to see how much of this actually transfers I could be doing this whole thing for nothing people I could be doing it for nothing But then you guys had to be somewhere, so you might as well be here watching me make a fool of myself. <laughs> Talking about reinventing yourself and other such things that you might want to do, you might want to consider. Then again, if you if you weren't interested in some of this, I'm sure you would have clicked off 
a while ago. I know you probably can't see this, but I'm out far enough so that you get the whole picture. To me, this is the quickest way to transfer patterns. You can get transfer paper or graphite paper in white as well. So if you want to transfer on a dark surface, but I don't think I have any of that at the moment. Any of the white. Okay, move down. That would have been the ideal thing to put up here. The other thing you can do is you can rub the back if it is a dark surface. Another thing you can do is rub the back with chalk, like chalkboard chalk. We did one of the coolest backgrounds we did. Maybe we'll do this sometime. It was for a table that I painted that had all kinds of floral motifs on it. It was like a little end table. Honestly, I didn't like the table. I gave it to... <laughs> okay, here's a story for you. I didn't like the table. And probably it was because I'd worked on it for like weeks and weeks and weeks. And I gave... After I'd held on to this thing, it was an expensive little table. Okay, race. That's the end of my, my timers going off. So um, you can go ahead and give away the third um, the third set. Okay, so I'm going to have to go through here and I've made this really hard for myself. <laughs> I'm getting kicked. You guys can't even see it. Let me get a soft pencil. I'll be right back. Now that I've totally sidetracked myself, I don't even remember what the story was I was going to tell you. What was? Oh, it was about the table. This charcoal. I don't want to do that. Let's do this. This is a 6B. Might might work. So anyway, I did this table. <clears throat> okay. It was a. It was like an end table. I mean, the thing was, the painted the painting area was like this big. And so this painting technique that we did was in this center of this table. Anyway, I didn't like it when I got done. Probably would like it now. Anyway, I gave it to my niece. Okay, I gave her the table because I didn't want to keep it. And I went to her house one time. This is when you know whether you're attached to something or not. And her three-year-old was sitting, because it was the right size table for her, she was sitting at the table coloring on the surface of the table. And it drew me up completely short, because I was like, you have, g it's a hand-painted table you gave to your three-year-old. The moral of that story is when you give something to somebody, you have to turn loose of it. Yes. Oh, goodness. Goodness. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Let's go back and see if we can, <laughs> let's see if we can make some sort of order out of this. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to see if I can redraw this where I can see it. Okay? Let's try it. I'm going to start with the parts that I can kind of see. Goodness sakes. I made this really hard for myself. Anyway, the technique for that um, table was acrylic paint. And then you, um, we 
captured, while the paint was wet, we captured smoke in the paint. It was a very cool technique. So maybe we'll do that sometime. I don't know. This is not going to be exactly what is on this page. Well, it'd help if you could even see it, wouldn't it? So did Race do the third set? Hi, Malia. Race, you can do give away the third set if you want to. That would be great. So I'm just using this as my go-to. Let's see, do we have any others here? Yeah, kind of, kind of, sort of. Let's bring in one here. Like that and like that. Okay, there we got the tail. Good enough. He didn't do it yet? Okay. He must be on the phone or something. Oh, Hannah. <laughs> it was. Oh, it was. It was breathtaking. It was totally breathtaking. I just could not believe that she had put her three-year-old on my, on that. See, I still had ownership of it on that hand painted table that I must have had. If I had one, I had 300 hours in it. So even though I didn't like it, I still was attached to it. Clearly, I was still attached to it. Okay, so we got the body more or less. Oh goodness, Barb, you made this hard for yourself. You made this hard for yourself. How in the world could you make it this hard? All right, so up here, where is, this is, how did I make this so hard for myself? But I did. Okay, so somewhere here we have a head. <laughs> Golly. Okay, let's try again. Let's see if we can. All right, I'm having to resort to plan B because I can't see. Can't see. You think so, Mary? I don't know. Could be. She's all grown up now. She is all grown up now. All right, let's try this. Got to give myself a little bit more. I got to give myself a little bit more to work with. So I have slopped on there very sloppily. That is a word you know, sloppily. Some pastel. All right, let's see if we can, let's see if we can get this pattern on here, honestly, Barb. Race has gone far, far away. He's gone to another, another space, apparently. He'll be back when he gets off the phone, I'm sure. Now, where is my stylus? Here it is. Okay. All right, let's see if we can get it to show up now. Hmm? Ah, success. Okay. Yeah, I have a table that sits right beside me here in my studio. That was one my dad made for me. It's actually pretty cool. I'll see if I can show it to you here in a minute. 
and he made it for me. I don't remember what the occasion was, if it was for a birthday. My dad was a very creative person, but he wasn't exactly one of your um, I don't know. He just he made interesting things, but when you're a kid, you're like, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird, Dad. You know, it was one of those things. Let's see. Do I have... Oh, look at that! Yes, yes, I can see it now. Okay. Now let me see if I can put in. Come over it. I can hear I can hear the critics now. You'd think she would know what she was doing. Well, you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> we all have those critics. Yes, we do. All right, what did this do over here? And this goes kind of like that and kind of like that. And that's good enough. It's not exactly the same, but it's kind of kind of okay. Good enough. Ah, <sighs> you guys. <coughs> All right, let me show you this table. Let me show you this table. This will be terrible camera work, just so you know, because um, I'm going to do it with my hand-held cat cam. It's going to be a cat cam. to get some stuff out of the way here because I always have crap piled on it. Okay, here we go. This is the table that sits beside me. And the reason I put this table in here, this is a table my dad made. Uh, pay no attention to all the garbage around it. Um, this is a table he made and I put this table in here so that Chance would have a place to sit so that he, when he was in here bugging me, <laughs> that he would stay off my lap. But this is the cool part about this table. The lid, the, the uh, top of it comes off just like this. Okay, it comes off. And that is uh, also a bench. Now, I would not have anybody sit on that at this point because this rope that was the seat has been on there forever. Now, if you had shorts on as a kid and you sat on this when you got off, your butt, <laughs> you know, your legs had the imprint of this. But it was such a fun little seat to sit on and even more fun as a little kid to play with that. You could pretend you were playing a harp or whatever. But anyway, there's the, that's what the legs look like. The poor thing has seen a better day and, uh, but anyway, yeah, there is that table. And that sits beside me right here all the time. Another thing that he made for me was a toy chest. Because um, when I was a kid, you, you know, you had toys, but you didn't have a ton of toys. You had toys, but not a ton. So they would fit inside of a chest. It was almost like a cedar chest, you know, hope chest kind of thing. <laughs> it was heavy, man. I still have it because we recycled it and used it for a race when he was little. And um, it's a fun table, isn't it? Race, are you still here? Hi, Dar. Has anybody, has anybody see Race coming back? He'll be here when he gets here. Um, so anyway, this toy chest, it was a fairly good sized toy chest. And it had an upholstered top on it. that, Because that's what they did, you know. Oh, he's not here. Okay, you can run. 
Since you're not here, you can go ahead and run the third giveaway, unless you did already. I didn't see that you did. Anyway, the toy chest had this upholstered top. It was gray. It was probably something that was left over from, the fabric was left over from something. It was gray. It was really ugly um, upholstery fabric, but it was what it was, and so, you know, I, I liked it. And, um, you know, it's what I had. But anyway, the lid, to keep the lid from going too far back, it had, he put chain on it. So the chain connected to the trunk, the part that held the toys, and the other part connected to the lid. So the lid would go back only so far that it wouldn't, you know, fall all the way back. The bad part of his philosophy here was, it, if it ever came forward, it would come down and it would smash your fingers quicker than a minute. <laughs> it was dangerous. And you know, come to think of it, I don't think we ever did change that. So I'm sure Ray's got his fingers um, smashed a few times too. Yeah. Go figure. Anyway, all right, let's move on, shall we? <clears throat> so race is going to try it again. Okay. I don't know how this is going to work, people. So we're just going to we're just going to go for it. Um, if I had my I don't think I do. If I had a needed eraser in here, I would roll off some of this graphite. I'm going to come down to the table. I'm just going to use this white. White eraser. Let me get rid of the paper on this one. <clears throat> okay, for three minutes. Okay, Race, thank you. So, what the, they're putting in that the um, Q for is for a drawing for a third set of the last and final set which internationals are welcome to participate in. The last set of my book on CD. You will have to have a CD player of some kind to be able to listen to it. Okay? Because it will come to you in a physical Form. It will come to you in a physical form like this. So it has six CDs. Okay? Okay. So if you are interested in that, follow the instructions inside the chat. So all I'm trying to do here once I got the um, graphite to show up, <laughs> now I'm trying to get rid of it. So there you go. Perfect. Ah, can you see? Can you see the uh, phoenix? I think you can. All right, let's take a let's take a big old. I have no idea if this is going to work, people. So we're just going to go for it. I'm going to take a big Posca pen. <clears throat> I do not expect this to stay white. All I'm after here is just to get the the image to show up. And it's kind of like rebirthing the uh, Phoenix, right? <laughs> Sharon, that makes me laugh. <laughs> that makes me laugh. I have a cedar chest that Clausman made at the foot of our bed. <laughs> we, have, we have an antique bed. I have a cedar chest that's at the foot of our bed. It's beautiful. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's big enough to bury me in. <laughs> we can save money on a casket because it is big enough to bury me in. Yeah. <laughs> but it holds a lot of stuff, which is great. Okay, so let's try this and see how this is going to work. I am using a white Posca pen. In no way do I expect this to stay white.
We are simply here trying to get our image to show up. In a perfect world, which of course when you're streaming live is never perfect, in a perfect world you would do the background and let it thoroughly dry. But of course, it is not a perfect world when you are a streamer because you're always pushing the envelope. Mama is learning. That's Sherry. Sherry, I have your address, I think. But go ahead and send it to me again. Congratulations, Sherry. <clears throat> Let me find a pen so I can write that down. But do send it to me again just to make sure, okay? Okay. And that completes... The giveaway. Uh huh. And you can see it there, right there, Sherry, with the the link that Nightbot has for you. Okay, where's my <clears throat> pattern? I'm just referencing my pattern a little bit. So of course it's going to pick up the graphite, but that's okay. We don't we don't care. We do not care, do we? Does anybody here care? I don't think so. <clears throat> it's actually kind of cool how it's mixing with the graphite and giving me a nice gray. So who here is going to celebrate Halloween? <laughs> Are you trick-or-treating? Are you doing trick-or-treats with kids? I cannot imagine how, how that's going to go this year. Tell you the truth. We don't do Halloween. <clears throat> I've told this before, but I'll tell it again. Because <laughs> I've never been one <clears throat> to say something just for... Uh, just one time. We live in a house that is a split foyer. So Halloween is just annoying. Because if you do candy in a split foyer house, you're constantly going up the steps and down the steps and back up the steps because just about the time that the door calms down then you got to go back up there because somebody rings the doorbell again and and if you don't get there quick enough then the kids pound on the doorbell and upset the dog and it just you know crazy it's craziness and uh, so at one point I thought, well, I'm going to take care of that. And so I bought a big plastic pumpkin. And I put the candy in the pumpkin with a sign that says, Happy Halloween, help yourself. And that actually worked for like, I don't know, two or three years or something. And it worked really well. And then one year, some rotten kid stole the pumpkin. And I'm like, well, okay. <sighs> yeah. So that was annoying. That was super annoying. You know what I mean? I'm just digging in my, my paint pens here. So I thought, okay. And really, I do love kids. It's not that I don't like kids. I sound like I don't like kids. <laughs> That's not the truth. But I'm like, all right, you rotten kids. <laughs> I'm not doing that anymore. So I stopped. So I stopped. I didn't do candy anymore. Yeah. 
And you know, one year, one year, this was, gosh, I don't know, Race was out of high school. And he and a girlfriend that he was dating at the time, they sat at the end of the driveway uh, in lawn chairs <laughs> and doled out the candy. They, I guess they thought it was fun. I don't know. I was glad. I was super glad that they were doing that. Super glad they did that. Saved me going up and down steps. <clears throat> we had a dog. We had a boxer dog. It was, actually, this dog belonged to Race, and his name was Zeke. And this dog, bless his heart, was not the sharpest tack in the box. And he w alerted to the doorbell always. He started when he was a puppy. He did it till the day he died. He alerted to the doorbell. So we tried to break him of it to the point that he would see one of us knowing us. We would walk outside. We'd have him by the door and we'd ring the doorbell. He'd know it was us and he would do the same thing. He would alert to the doorbell. You can imagine what a nightmare that was with that dog. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, okay, let's go back. Let's, so what I'm going to do here is just simply take this image, which I now can see. Now I can see it. And now we're just going to play with it. Okay? Just play. Just play. Oh, that dog. Oh, that dog. He was a great dog, but man, he was annoying too. He is a great dog. Let me get a smaller black pen. This one is too big. I'm just using paint pens because it's easy. So this is a black Posca, little tiny one. And I think this is dry. Dry enough. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm not trying to go exactly over the lines, just, and going quickly, um, so that I begin to get that sort of dimensionality. You don't want to do this with Sharpies or any of that kind of stuff. You want to use paint pens when you're doing this. So let's see. Halloween is tomorrow. The day after that, November the 1st, would be my mother's birthday. And she would have been, this year, how old would she have been? A hundred and nine, I think. Yeah, a hundred and nine. Can you believe that? <clears throat> when she was, she was in the hospital when she was both she and my dad were in the hospital the same day. That was part of the nightmare that unfolded. So I'll talk a minute while this dries a little bit. We'll let that dry before I add another color on top of it. Anyway, they were in the hospital. They went in the hospital the same day, like five or six, five hours apart from each other. I had one in the, the medical ICU unit, cardiac ICU. I had another one in the emergency room. It was crazy. That's when the nightmare started. Anyway, <clears throat> after she kind of got stabilized and moved into a room, my parents at that point were both 90. <laughs> I'll never forget the day she said to me <laughs> in the hospital. She says, oh, I said, well, how are you doing? She goes, oh, I feel like I'm 100. <laughs> I'm like, well, Mom, like, uh, Mom, and she goes, she, and then she just had to stop and think for a minute. She goes, oh, uh, oh, because <laughs> all of a sudden she realized she wasn't very far from that. She was not very far from being a hundred. <laughs> but you know how it is? 
in your own head, you're always the same age. Have you noticed that? It's only the mirror that changes. It's only the reflection that changes, but you're, but you know, <laughs> you're the same age inside. You may feel, you know, your body may not work the same, but you still feel the same way, you know? So anyway, wasn't that funny? Yeah, so funny. Ah, oh, I feel like I'm a hundred. Well, mom. Okay, so let's put some more colors in here. I have some metallic. Um, oh, stop saying that. I have some metallic Poscas. This is a kind of a teal color. So let's see if this will add a little something something. Not really needing it to be so much color as glimmer and shine and just a little something something extra trying to keep this as loose as possible you can kind of see it you can see it better on camera honestly than I can see it here when you're trying to keep things loose when you're drawing or sketching or whatever, if you'll or painting even, if you'll hold back on the back part of the marker or paintbrush or whatever, back toward the back, rather than getting down here like this, you're going to keep your strokes looser. It's much better. Okay, I'm going to read the chat a minute. Hi, Krissa. I know. No, Laura, you're 12. You already said that. <laughs> You said that. 19 and 19. Isn't that funny? What's, what ages do you guys feel like you are? So Laura thinks she's 7. I think she's 12. But, you know, she says 7. Barbara Sabo says 19. Um, yeah, it depends. They don't look in the mirror. It's, looking in the mirror it gets a little surprising, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Chris. Yeah, and that's true. One of her favorite quotes is, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you are? Really? Yep. 19, 10, 21, 100. <laughs> Linda says 100 because her body's crap. Uh, 85. Well, there you go. But 30. Yeah, 30 inside. 30-something. 30 there you go. Always 29, plus shipping and handling. There you go, Barbara. Patrice is 9. Millie, hi, Millie, is 8. Miko, for show. Hello, Miko. Janice is 57. Mel is 30. Chris, 9 to 12. Barbara Clark, 59. Joni Sorensen's 40. <laughs> Kids do bring you back to reality, don't they? Yep. When you, in your head, in your head, when you think that you are younger <laughs> than your kids, that's when it gets to be a problem. Yeah. <clears throat> that's when it gets that way. Yeah. So, I don't know how old I think I am. How old do I feel? I know how old I am, but how old do I feel? Hmm. I was born old. Any of you like that? I was born old. <clears throat> Dana, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Good for you. Um, oh, yeah, your kids always think you're old. Kids and grandkids. Your kids think you're ancient. And sometimes they're right. Sometimes they're right. Um, how old do I think I am? How old do I feel? I don't know. I was born old. I really was. I was the tail end of five girls. And... Uh, my parents were older when I was born that, th at a time when that was not fashionable at all. In fact, it was frowned upon if you were in your 40s and had a child. And uh, I don't know how old I think feel. Anyway. <laughs> That's funny, Chris. <laughs> she had her years mixed up. That's funny. Okay, so let's do this. 
I know. That it's, sometimes that's what happens. Hi, Beth. I know. Sometimes you just feel like you're just you're born old, and that's that. You know. All right. This one is pink, or maybe bronze. I don't know. Something bronze-ish. Let's try it. So let's add a little. How are you doing, Beth? Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I'm sorry if you hear my tummy growling. Um, it's decided that it wants to be fed. Mm -hmm. We're going to stop here shortly. Because here's what happens when you start doing this kind of stuff. At some point, you go you go one layer too many. Seth After talks about that. It's like you should have stopped one layer ago. Oh, bird just flew into my window. Poor thing. I do love this image of the phoenix, though. I really do. Okay, so we're going to call that good. Oh, good, Beth. Good. Oh, adulting is the pits, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to let that go just a little bit longer. While it's doing its thing, let's, um, while it's drying a little bit, because I want to add some gold on top of it, and then I may have to come back and add some black again, just, just because, um, just because, because I think it may need it. Let me get the black. And then if all else fails at the end, if I need to sparkle it back up, I'll uh, add a little bit of white back to it. Let's put some ink around the edge just because we can and because I like ink around art journal pages. Oh no, Laura put the glue brush in her coffee. Oh, Laura. I'll tell you, I hate it when I do that. <clears throat> so this is Cobalt Archival Ink. This is the ink that I'm currently obsessed with for edging pages. I used to always use black, and for whatever reason, I really like the blue, and I don't like it to be too meticulously done, so I kind of am a little on the sloppy side. A little sloppy. And those of you who came in later, this was the image uh, that we're doing. Oh, I forgot the comma strokes in there. Well, we should do that. Okay. Good thing I looked at it again. <coughs> that was the image from the book, Normal Doesn't Live Here Anymore. That was one of the illustrations. So that's what we're doing because we're talking about rising from the ashes and I don't know why I was talking about that today but it just seemed to be on my in my thoughts I couldn't get rid of it so you know how it is if something wakes you up something just wakes you up um, and you can't get it out of your brain then you probably better do something about it so so there you go. I do like edging the art journal pages just because I think it's gives it a bit of a frame, makes it feel a little more like it has a beginning and an end. And I don't know, we may totally screw it up at this point. We'll try not to, but we may.
All right, good enough is good enough. All right. No kidding, California and Colorado. I'm telling you, bless their hearts. Um, okay, let's put a little bit of gold in here. So this is gold. This should be dry by now, more or less. This is gold Posca pen. Um, before we go too far, let's put some comma strokes or teardrop strokes so it has a chance to dry, which you probably can't see, but Remember, all we're going for is just a suggestion of something and to have that thing that reminds, uh, all I'm after is something that will remind me. Remind me. We have to um, kind of reinvent ourselves during this whole COVID thing that we're living through. There's no point in being mad about it. I've I've gone through that stage about being angry and frustrated and feeling hemmed in and all of that. I've gone through that stage. Sometimes I still go through that stage. Um but life is never gonna be exactly the way it was. It's just not it's just not. So, what are we going to do about it? Okay, so we have different colors on there. I'm going to let this dry. Actually, I'll hit it with a heat gun. a fun art journal page to do. It's just nothing. It's just, you know, it just is what it is. It'd be fun to put a quote over here on this side, something to do with a phoenix or something. Um, Alright, I'm going to use the small black Posca pen again. And so now let's come in here once again and see if we can kind of clear this up a little bit. That way we have <clears throat> all those delicious colors in the background. But we have a bit more definition here. So I encourage you to think about um, 
getting through this experience and how you want to be when it's all said and done. It's going to be a while. Um, yeah, it's going to be a while. Today is the 30th. So just think about how you want to be when it's over and put some thought into it. And if you are if you are tempted to allow yourself to be caught in the craziness of the news and so forth, I encourage you to do your best to walk away from that and to be in a better space as much as you possibly can. Remember that if you find yourself getting burned up in whatever way, and I can speak from experience, my necklace is, there we go. I can speak from experience that if you find yourself getting burned up by whatever life, you know, has dealt your direction, you can always reinvent yourself. Sometimes it takes a while, but it's usually worth it. You're usually better on the other side. Okay, that is it. <coughs> That is it. Thank you guys for joining me. If you are not a member of HowToGetCreative.com, I encourage you to check it out. The links for the book, if you are interested in that, are all of its different forms. Except I didn't put the Kindle in there, but you can find that. <coughs> um, are in the description box. And I think that's going to do it for today. So thank you guys so much for joining me. And um, it's fun being here. Fun sharing the time with you. Thank you for being in my studio. I always feel better when I spend some time here with you guys. So thank you for being here. Remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I will see you again before you know it. So I'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody.